For 17 years, I moved in a barren wilderness. It's true that I was evangelical in my preaching, so much so that on several occasions I was asked to conduct special missions. I was even asked to address Catholic conventions. Because I was candle of the 21 revival, I was candle of the mid Gail revival. And because of that, I was asked to address those conventions and conduct those missions. And God, in his mercy, gave me a measure of encouragement. God is wonderful. Seventeen years of it, knowing in my own heart that I wasn't right with God. Oh, what an experience. What an experience. Feeling out of touch. And on my knees before God, again and again I acknowledged it. Until one morning, I was preparing for a Keswick convention. I'm in my study, it's about five o'clock in the morning, when I heard someone singing in the drawing room of the mass. And of course I recognized the voice, it was the voice of my own young daughter. And she's singing, coming, coming, yes they are, coming, coming from afar, from the Indies and the Gandhis, steady flows that living stream to love's ocean to its fullness, Calvary, their wandering theme. There was something about that singing that spoke to me and gripped me and moved me because I knew that that lassie was thinking of the day when she would be in Nepal as a missionary, definitely called by God to that field. She's only 16 years of age. After singing through the solo, she came over and she threw herself on my knees, as daughters sometimes do. She put her two arms round my neck and said to me, Daddy, I would like to have a talk with you. Well, I said, Gina, I'll be happy indeed to talk with you. But oh, what was coming to me? We went to my study. And she said, for several days, Daddy, I've been battling against facing you with this question, but I must do it. When you were a young pilgrim, before you went in for the ministry, you saw revival. You saw revival. How is it, Daddy, that you're not seeing revival now? And then faced me with this crushing question. Daddy, you have a large congregation and many are joining the church. But Daddy, when did you last kneel beside a poor sinner and led him to Jesus? My dear people, that shook me. That shook me. I went to the Kessie Convention that night and did my part. But on my way home I vowed in the presence of God that if he didn't bring me back to the experience that I had on that horse's back, I would give up the ministry and go back into business. And my dear people, I meant it. Oh, I meant it. I would be anything but a deceiver. When I arrived home, I couldn't take supper. I went to my study. I said to my wife and daughter, don't disturb me tonight. I'm going to have a session with God. And I threw myself on my face in my study. 
and I cried to God to forgive me. Oh, I cried to him to forgive me. And in about an hour, bless his name, he came to me. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, and who healeth all thy diseases. And I knew that God had come to make me again, and to bring me back to that glorious experience in the fullness of the blessing of the Holy Ghost. I know that I lay there with this power coming over me. Oh, I can't fully describe it. I can't put it into words. But I was caught up in an experience that could only be explained in terms of God. An experience of the Holy Ghost that had come again. But just at that moment, a vision came to me. And that was a vision of hell. A vision of hell. Now I could see multitudes, multitudes streaming over the caverns of death to be doomed and damned eternally. What a vision. Oh, what a vision. At that moment, the door of my study opened. And that dear lassie came in. She lay down beside me, and I can almost hear her voice now as she is praying to God and saying, Oh, Jesus, keep his reason to Danny. She was afraid that I was going mental because of the vision that God gave me, the vision of souls lost eternally. God kept my reason to me. And suddenly it left me. But it left me weak. Oh, brother, it left me weak. And then a voice seemed to say to me, go back to the faith mission. Give up the ministry. You've suffered much by what you listen to in the church. For 17 years you've been in a barren wilderness. God has come to you again. Obey God. And thank God, oh, thank God. I said yes to God. And the flood tides of glory came over me again. And if I had a vision of hell, oh, I had a vision of the risen Christ. The risen Christ, able to save to the uttermost, and God saying to me, go out and tell it again. And on the following morning, I wrote three letters to the secretary of my congregation, to the presbytery clerk and to the clerk of assembly, resigning my charge in this town, but retaining my status as a Presbyterian minister in Scotland. And uh, I retain that to this day. But I'm now free. A month's time, I'm free to go out. I'm free to proclaim the glorious gospel. And I'm happy in the midst of the Holy Ghost. Amen. My dear people, I say that from the depth of my heart. It was the Holy Ghost that did it. 
And in a very short time, I found myself in the midst of this glorious revival that continued for three years and continues to this day. It has kept coming since then, wave after wave. 